this is lecture number 11 of the course AU203 statistics and quality control and in this lecture we will go into the concept of probability distribution. Uh, we will start the lecture by uh, what is random variable and uh, discrete random variables and uh, continuous random variables and then we will go into the concept of probability distribution and uh, then we will go into the formal definition of uh, probability mass function uh, and then cumulative distribution function. Uh, so, what is random variable? A random variable is uh, actually a variable whose value depends on randomness or chance. So, uh, this random variable can take any value. Uh, for example, if you are tossing a coin, fair coin, three times. So, uh, let x represent the number of head in this experiment. So, uh, the uh, x could be any number, x is uh, the number of heads. So, x can take different values, for example, we toss uh, 3 times and uh, uh, we either we get 0 times head or either we get 1 times head or either you get uh, 2 times head or either you get 3 times head. So, this would be actually the outcome of an experiment and uh, x represents, uh, x can take uh, values, either it could be a 0 value, it could be 1 value, it could be 2, it could be 3 in this experiment. So, the random number, uh, random variable can take any value, since it's a variable, so its value is not fixed, it is not a constant. Uh, it would vary depending upon the outcome of an experiment. So, uh, or one can think of random variable as some sort of a function. Uh, we will go into the uh, detail in the next lecture, but uh, at this point of time, uh, we call a random variable as such a variable whose value depends uh, on a chance or uh, any value uh, it can be associated with it depending upon the possible outcomes of an experiment. Uh, uh, these random variables could be of two types, uh, one is discrete, then if it is discrete it means the possible outcomes could be either finite value or it could be uh, some countable number of infinite values. So, for example, it could be 0, it could be 1, 2, 3, but it cannot be 1.1 1 .1 or it cannot be 2.2, .2. so there is no such thing as 2.2 .2 heads or 2.2 uh, .2 tails, so there is no such thing. So, uh, such variables are called as uh, uh, discrete random variables. Uh, for example, uh, 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 the number of free throws by a basketball player uh, makes in his next 20 attempts. So, uh, for example, this basketball player tries to throw the ball in the basket and uh, uh, in 20 number of attempts, it could be 0 that has been basketed, it could be 1 that could be basketed or it could be 2 that could be basketed or it could be 20. So, there is no such thing as 1.5 baskets. So, 1.5 times the basketball player has basket the ball. So, this is something not uh, meaningful. So, this is an example of a discrete uh, uh, random variable. In case of a dice also, either uh, if you roll a dice, uh, uh, the numbers are 1 to 6. So, it is not possible to get 3.5 as a number. You know. Uh, sometimes uh, 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 it doesn't mean actually uh, the whole number or something but for example uh, in case of a bat uh, you say the profit uh, on a bat is dollar 1.5 so the outcome of the bat either you win the bat or you lose the bat. So if you win the bat you are going to get 1.5 dollars or if you uh, uh, lose the bet, you are supposed to give the 1.5 dollars. So, uh, it means your outcome cannot be other than 1.5, either plus 1.5 or minus 1.5. So, it is some, that's why it is, we call it as some discrete value. Discrete doesn't mean the whole numbers. Na? Discrete means uh, the value cannot be other than uh, the, uh, uh, other than this, uh, what is designated. For example, here 1.5 dollar is actually a designated price on a bet. It could be 2 dollar, it could be 3 dollar, it could be 7 dollar. But your outcome of an experiment, either you win the bet or you 
lose the bet uh, there is no such thing as uh, between uh, uh, losing and winning okay there is a class of random variable what you call it a continuous random variable in which uh, 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 you can take uh, not a particular uh, uh, discrete value but uh, you can take uh, any value within certain interval and in that interval there are number of infinite number of possible values uh, for example the time between each failure for example uh, uh, it could be 1.5 hours it could be 1.4 hours it could be 1.005 hours or it could be uh, 0.95 hours or something similarly if you want to know the speed of the pitch in a basket in a baseball uh, let's say the speed of the pitch is 20 km or this could be 18 km it could be 18.75 km so uh, it means uh, the random variable can take any value which is not a particular integer or particular designated value but it could be uh, 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 an uh, interval and uh, it has infinite possible values between 0 and 1 uh, the middle is 0 0.5 and middle of the middle is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 half of it would be 0 0.25 and uh, the middle of the 0 0.25 would be 0 0.125 so even between 0 and 1 you could have infinite number of values so any value can come in from an experiment then such a random variable would be called as continuous random variable okay so the concept of probability distribution so for example if you take an example uh, 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 we learn from experiment that uh, approximately 60 percent of the newborn babies uh, have developed joint days so uh, uh, suppose we randomly sample uh, two newborn babies so and here we suppose that x is uh, representing the uh, number of uh, babies uh, that develop joint days so here x is a random variable so what we are interested in what is the probability distribution of this random variable x x can take any value so possible values of x could be either out of two newborn babies you are sampling uh, zero baby have a joint disc or one baby has a joint disc or two babies has joint disc so the possible value for this random variable would be zero one and two so what we are interested in how much is actually the probability of uh, uh, in a sample of two newborn babies how many uh, uh, what is the probability that zero have a joint disc or one has a joint disc or two has a joint disc so if you write down uh, the possible outcomes in this manner for example uh, x is a random variable which can take uh, possible values are zero one and two so let's say if uh, two babies are sampled so first baby having a joint is second has a joint is so the value of x would be 2 and the probability of uh, first baby joint is is 0.6 once this event is completed uh, so there is an and rule it means you are multiplying it then the second baby would also having a joint is would be uh, the same probability 0.6 so the two babies would have a probability of uh, join this if you pick a sample of two that would be 0 0.6 multiplied by 0 0.6 uh, one or another possibility is first baby having a join this and second baby do not have a join this and represents not having a join this so let's say the probability of having a join this is 60 percent then probability of uh, not having a join this would be uh, 100 minus 60 it means 40 percent so uh, the possible outcomes out of that and their uh, x is a random variable and its corresponding probability we can calculate so uh, if you write in this manner it is actually showing the distribution of the probability so once we say uh, what will be the distribution of the probability we can say x is uh, the random variable which can take value either 0 or 1 or 2 so 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 for 2 it is 0 0.36 and uh, uh, 0.6 and 0.4 would be 0.24 and uh, uh, the possibility of one would be either this or this 
so 0.24 plus 0.24 you add them together to get 0.48 so 0.48 is the probability you got it because either the first one is having a joint disc second one is not having a joint disc would be 0.4 or first one is having no joint disc it means 0.4 and the second baby would be having a joint disc then it is 0.6 so 0.4 into 0.6 would be uh, 0.24 and 0.24 plus 0.24 would be 0.4 Four eight, and if uh, no uh, uh, baby has joined this, it means first is not having a joined this is point four, and second is also not having a joined this is point four. So we say point one six is the probability of uh, uh, both having no joined this, both having uh, uh, no joined this. That would be point one six. So if you make this distribution, or if you plot x on the horizontal axis and its corresponding probability on the y-axis, then it would be called as a probability distribution uh, chart. And uh, this is table is representing how the probability of a random variable is uh, 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 sh uh, given here. Uh, the notation for x is a random variable means uh, x can take any value. And here uh, the value of that random variable could be either 0.16, uh, sorry, the small x could be either 0 or it could be 1 and it could be 2. So if it is 0, then your value comes out to be 0.16. If small x is 1, then your value is uh, 0.48. So you can think of this uh, probability distribution fun uh, uh, probability distribution as uh, this this is some mathematical function you can take different values as your input so you get a corresponding probability in the output so uh, one of the notation is where let's say uh, if x can take a value 0 and the its corresponding probability is 0 0.16 so the same thing uh, here capital X represents uh, a random variable and a small x represents the value of the random variable this value could be either 0, it could be 1, it could be 2. So another notation for representing this probability distribution is uh, uh, <clears throat> a probability for uh, when x is uh, 0. So here the value of a random variable is 0 and its corresponding probability is 0 0.16. So and here we uh, use a small letter to represent that corresponding probability. So what we notice here is if you uh, add those uh, values of those probability for that function, for example, probability of getting 0 is 0 0.16, probability of getting 1 is 0 0.48, and probability of getting 2 is uh, 0.36. So if you take the sum, if you add them together, you are going to get 1. So in general, for any probability distribution function, uh, if p of x is representing some uh, probability distribution function and uh, x are the values of that uh, random variable and if you uh, add them, if you provide different values for x and take the sum, you are going to get 1. So this is a general rule for every probability distribution function. Uh, so what you call it a probability distribution uh, for a random variable is actually just the listing of all the possible values of their uh, corresponding probability. So if you put a table or a chart in which uh, you have an information of a random variable and you know the corresponding probability for each random variable, then uh, such a thing is called a probability distribution table. Uh, if your random variable is discrete uh, uh, and your probability distribution table must satisfy this criteria. So whatever your corresponding probability for x is uh, a value of a random variable. So for any random variable its corresponding probability cannot be, uh, would always be lying between 0 and 1. So number cannot be less than 0 or cannot be greater than 1. So this probability will always be lying between 0 and 1 for whatever the value of the random variable you pick. Uh, second condition is we have already seen that the sum of the uh, probabilities for all possible values of the random variable, you take the sum, uh, you are going to get 1. So this is something true for any probability distribution. So let's say if any distribution is given, let's say for example, here x is a random variable and the value of the random variable it could be any value x can take any value for example 
from the previous case and we see that the sum always comes out to be 1. If you sum the probability of x, you always comes out to be 1. And if you just represent the same situation in the form of the uh, uh, some, uh, some chart like uh, probability distribution chart where uh, zero, x is representing a random variable, x can take a value of 0, x can take a value of point, uh, 1, x can take a value of 2. So once uh, there is 0 uh, babies have joined this, then its probability is uh, 0.16. And for uh, uh, one uh, uh, baby's joint days is 0 0.48 and for two is 0 0.36, uh, greater than 0 0.3. So if you represent by these bars, so this will be representing the uh, distribution of the probability. So what is actually, if you look at the probability distribution, immediately you find that uh, the, the possible values of a random variable are 0, 1 and 2. But which number is more probable? So you immediately see the uh, out of two sample of uh, newborn babies uh, from our uh, uh, probability distribution, we can say that uh, it is more probable to have at least one would be having uh, a joint disk. So not at least one, but one has a joint disk has a probability of about 48%. And two people joined this have a probability of 30, and both having not a joined this is only 16%. So this immediately gives us how the probability of a random variable is distributed. Uh, take another example, for example, a traffic survey at a critical point around the town center was conducted at a peak traveling times uh, for the whole period of a week, for a whole working week. Uh, the survey include uh, 1000 cars uh, and uh, the number of people in each car was noted and the following results were uh, uh, presented for example uh, uh, one number of people in a car is uh, 560 times they found only one person is in the car and 240 times uh, they found uh, uh, two people in the car and 150 cars having three people in the car and 40 times they found four people in the car and obviously uh, five times uh, five people they found 10 cars they found five people uh, sitting in the car so greater than five there is nobody they found more than five people would be sitting in a car so that number came out to be zero so this is uh, the data we got uh, okay what we do is uh, we need to plot that distribution so if we plot that distribution so number of uh, people and the frequency is plotted so it is around 560 is that and uh, so you see uh, the distribution plot shows that uh, number of people's uh, higher number of people's in less number of cars and uh, one people uh, mostly you will find in most of the cars so uh, what we do is uh, uh, here we are dealing with the random discrete random variable uh, if this is true because uh, the random variable here is number of people so either would be one people is sitting either two people would sitting it is not 1.5 people sitting so it means we are dealing with a discrete random variable uh, and the second thing is uh, represent the same information into probability distribution. So what I do is uh, I say uh, suppose x is a discrete random variable and that uh, x represents the number of people sitting in a car and if we represent uh, the same data in this form uh, then it would be called as a probability distribution table. So here what we have done is uh, be, uh, instead of uh, uh, the uh, out of 1000 cars, uh, 560 has uh, one person sitting. So probability of one person would be 560 divided by 1000. So it would be 0.56. Uh, similarly, two people sitting in a car would be 240 divided by 1000 it comes out to be 0.24 so instead of uh, putting num uh, value in this plot it would not be the probability uh, distribution plot but it would be just a, a histogram or bar chart representing this data in this form but once you put in the form of a probability 
then it would be called as a probability distribution plot because the probability distribution plot the value of the probability would always because this 0.56 always lies a number between 0 and 1 and second condition for this probability distribution is if you take the sum you are going to get 1 so if you add the all these probabilities for every random variable then your sum must come out to be 1 so it must satisfy the condition defined for a probability distribution uh, one for a given random variable its probability would be lying between 0 and 1 and second condition is the sum of the all the probabilities would be equal to 1. Uh, <coughs> take this problem consider a situation that by mistake three faulty fuses are put into a box uh, containing two good fuses so you have all together five fuses out of which uh, uh, three were the faulty fuses and two were the good fuses okay the faulty and good fuses mixed up and are indistinguishable by side so you take uh, an experiment in which you need to take the two fuses from the box so what is the probability that you take no faulty fuse one faulty fuse or two faulty fuse so uh, this this information can be best represented in the form of because we are interested in the probability of each so for example we have all together five fuses out of which three are faulty so getting a faulty fuse is the probability would be three by five and uh, not getting the faulty fuse would be two by uh, five so the probability of uh, uh, if you pick the first fuse out of five in a box the probability of getting a few uh, faulty would be three by five okay once you have picked now you have four number of fuses available and out of that four once is already faulty then uh, the uh, number of faulties would be not three but it would be two and the probability of picking the second fuse would be faulty would be two by four and the combined probability by multiplying multiplication rule you can uh, say that first is faulty and second is faulty so the probability of first faulty is 3 by 5 and second faulty would be 2 by 4 so you multiply together to get 0.3 is your two faulty fuses so similarly if uh, no faulty fuse or two faulty fuse is a very simple uh, 0.3 is the probability for getting two faulty fuses first faulty and second faulty no faulty fuse means uh, you pick the first which is not faulty and uh, second one you pick is also not faulty so first you pick not faulty would be 2 upon 5 and then 1 upon 4 is second then you multiply together to get 0.1 is the probability to get the zero faulty fuses similarly for one faulty fuse it could be first one is faulty second is not faulty or the second one is not faulty and the first one is not faulty and second one is faulty so you add them together 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 then 0 0.6 which is the probability of getting one faulty fuse so you uh, assume here uh, possible outcomes would be either zero faulty one faulty or two faulty so you represent in this uh, tabular form so probability of getting no faulty would be 0 0.1 and probability of getting one faulty would be 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 that is 0 0.6 and probability of getting two faulty would be 0.3 as you have evaluated and you can represent the same thing in the uh, some sort of a graph as well that would be called as a probability distribution plot where horizontal axis is representing a random variable and the y axis is representing its corresponding probability so we see uh, one fuse faulty there is more probable than and then two fuse would be uh, faulty that is uh, higher and zero fuse no faulty once you pick out of that so that represents uh, this probability distribution table and you can see this uh, both conditions are satisfied for a probability distribution that the sum of the probabilities always comes out to be one okay take another example you have a tetrahedral dice so uh, actually uh, die actually is plural is dice so singular is uh, die so once you are taking two uh, tetrahedral die a tetrahedral means having four faces and it is not six faces it is not a ordinary die it is a tetrahedral die having four faces labeled one two three and four 
uh, are thrown and the random variable x represent the sum of the numbers shown on the dies so uh, uh, it could be first die could be 3 or second die second die could be 1 then 3 plus 1 the sum would be 4 so what you need is to find the probability distribution of that random variable so here uh, we make it a table like first die your possibility is 1 second die 2 uh, it could be 2 possible 3 so if you place a second die then second die could be 1 2 and 3 and you put a summation sign here so 1 plus 1 would be 2 1 plus 2 would be 3 1 plus 3 would be 4 1 plus 4 would be 5 so this is rep in this uh, uh, this uh, uh, part is representing the sum of the outcomes of uh, throwing this tetrahedral dice twice the same information can be written in this form if you see uh, probability uh, if let's say uh, x is a random variable x can take any value and the value of the random variable is uh, uh, here I represent by letter r because the particular value this r sum could be either 2 or it could be 3 or it could be 4 it could be 5 so how many times you can get sum 2 it is only 1 times out of 16 so 1 upon 16 is the probability of getting sum 2 or uh, this uh, 3 you get three, 2 times out of 16 and 4 you get 3 times out of 16 5 you get 1 2 3 and 4 times similarly 6 you get 3 times so you just draw this information in the form of the probability distribution table okay we can illustrate this uh, distribution and uh, find its shape so what we see here is uh, uh, throwing a dice twice which is a tetrahedral dice and uh, if you draw the probability distribution you see uh, the sum coming 2 or sum coming 8 the maximum value you can get is 8 and there is a symmetric distribution so 5 is more probable you get the sum 5 either 2 and 3 or 3 and 2 so this is more probable and then uh, other sum is less probable and this is a typical distribution we call it a symmetric distribution because what is on the uh, this is a middle value and what is on the left hand side the same is on the right hand side such a distribution um, uh, if we plot uh, from the table to a chart we will be able to see the distribution of the probability uh, next is finding out the probability that x is an odd number so your x is where the random variable which is actually a sum of the uh, digits on the dice uh, so uh, uh, once it's an odd number odd number could be either 3 or it could be 5 or it could be 7 so we say the probability of uh, getting a random variable is either x3 or x5 or x7 so we know the corresponding probability of getting 3 is uh, 2 by 16 and getting 5 is 4 by 16 and getting 7 is 2 by 16 you take the sum by applying the uh, or rule either you get 3 or 5 or 7 then the total uh, probability of getting an odd uh, is 0 0.5 and this is how you can work out the probability from the probability distribution tables uh, okay so what is uh, uh, probability mass function for example if your variable random variable is x which is a discrete random variable then x can take different values let's say it takes value x1 x2 or xn so a probability mass function is uh, such that it's satisfying that the corresponding probability is uh, always greater than zero so that uh, mathematical function is always a uh, 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 function which is uh, the value of that function comes out to be positive and sum of that uh, function comes out to be 1 so this function is actually representing nothing just representing the probability and uh, if any function satisfy these two criteria, where the value of that function for any discrete random variable it can take x1 it can take x2 it can take x3 and it is coming out to be a positive number uh, its value is coming out to be a positive number greater than 0 uh, and obviously is uh, smaller than 1 and sum uh, is uh, uh, sum of the probabilities always comes out to be 1 then it is uh, such a mathematical function would be called as uh, 
probability mass function so we can represent by small letter f and uh, here x is a random variable capital x and the value of the random variable is uh, discrete values it could be x1 it could be x2 and that mathematical function is called as probability mass function for example here uh, uh, from our previous example of joinders of uh, for the babies uh, x can take a value between z either 0 1 and 2 and its corresponding mathematical function gives us the probability and uh, so this function would be called as uh, probability mass function uh, the terminology for um, uh, probability mass function is used when your random variable is a discrete random variable if your random variable is a continuous function then this uh, is called as uh, instead of probability mass function it is called as uh, probability density function so once we will be dealing with continuous random variables uh, uh, the same probability same mathematical function would be named as uh, probability density function or pdf uh, once your random variable is a discrete random variable then this mathematical function is actually called as a uh, probability mass function uh, for example just take an example uh, the pmf pf means the probability mass function of a discrete random variable y is given as this mathematical form and y can take different values given that c is a constant find the value of c so if this is the problem uh, as you know uh, y is the value of your random variable capital y is a random variable and it can take different values either 0 1 2 3 and 4 so from this uh, I know that if I put y 0 I am going to get this function c times c is whatever constant uh, c multiplied by 0 would be 0 and if I put y equal to 1 1 case 1 is to the square is 1 1 times c would be c so all the probabilities you are going to get uh, in terms of c so if you put y4 4 square would be 16 then its corresponding probability would be 16 times c so what i need to find here in this problem the value of c as i know uh, this corresponding probability so 16 c is a number which must be greater than 0 and less than 1 this i know from uh, the definition of the probability mass function second thing i know is that the sum of these probabilities must be equal to 1 so this uh, fact uh, second condition i am going to use in order to find out the value of c so here if i take the sum i am going to get uh, the value 1 and if you solve then your value of c would be 1 upon 30 so that mathematical function uh, probability of y which is 1 upon 30 times y square is representing that probability distribution so for one uh, uh, value of a random variable uh, its probability comes out to be 1 by 30 and then 4 by 30 and 9 by 30 and then 16 by 30 and if you take the sum you are going to get 1 okay another problem let's say the problem uh, probability distribution of a random variable is given below by this uh, way so here w is a random variable and the value of the random variable would be represented by small letter w so and it is discrete uh, and their corresponding probabilities are given so what you need to find out you need to find out the probability of your random variable would be lying between minus 3 and 0 so what would be that probability and second part what is the probability that a random variable would be greater than minus 1 or uh, the probability of getting a random variable uh, from between the range minus 1 to plus 1 or second in the last part we have to find the mode of that distribution the mode is the most frequent value so uh, what we see here is uh, we can easily find out this part uh, but we go one by one first part is uh, to calculating the probability in the range from minus 3 to 0 so it can take uh, equal to 3 because it is included in this range or it could be minus 2 or it could be minus 1 but since it is less than 0 so 0 is not included in this uh, interval so here the probability of a random variable lying between minus 3 and 0 would be equal to uh, the probability when uh, random variable would be either minus 3 or minus 2 or minus 1 and we know its corresponding probabilities we took the sum then answer comes out to be 0 
okay in the next part probability greater than uh, minus 1 so the possible outcomes for greater than minus 1 would be either 0 or 1 so either 0 or 1 0 is 0.15 and 1 is 0.2 then the probability for a random variable greater than minus 1 would be 0.35 okay in the next part uh, in this range from minus 1 to plus 1 it means uh, minus 1 is not included plus 1 is not included so it means uh, probability of a random variable would be 0 which is 0.15 and you know the highest value is uh, higher probable is 0.3 so we can easily say the mode of the distribution would be a random variable minus 1 minus 1 is the most frequent value because it has the high uh, largest probability 0.3 that is the largest and if you draw the distribution you will see uh, minus 1 having 0.3 would be the size of its corresponding probability so that would be the mode of the distribution so mode here is minus uh, 1 okay so now we come into the concept of last thing what we call it a cumulative frequency distribution so this concept is quite an important concept we have already gone through the concept of probability mass function or probability density function it is nothing uh, pmf is just a, a mathematical function Uh, we satisfy that two condition that the correspond the probability for any random variable value of a random variable would be lying between 0 and 1 and sum of all the probabilities would be equal to 1 we call it a pmf when your random variable is a discrete random variable and the same thing uh, uh, same mathematical function would be called as pdf when your random variable is a continuous random variable okay now come to the concept of cumulative cumulative uh, you know from your uh, literal meaning cumulative means adding up together so let's say you have a journalist which is decided to carry out a survey of the prices of textbooks in a large shop so the journalist is interested in what is actually the uh, price average price of uh, uh, a book so he took a survey and he took a large sample of 470 textbooks and the results are summarized in the table for example uh, 13 books uh, would be lying in the cost from 0 to 10 dollars so less than 10 dollars would be 13 books and from 10 dollars to 15 dollars would be 53 books and 15 to 20 dollars would be 97 books and uh, uh, 20 to 25 dollars so 145 books so immediately you see here most of the books would be uh, the uh, the cost would be lying between uh, greater than 20 dollars and less than 25 dollars so there would be some lesser book greater than 25 dollars let's say 81 number of books 40 number of books in this cost range and so on so this is the information uh, the journalist got from the survey okay we put the same information into a little more meaningful uh, Uh, uh form and you see what i have done is this is an interval of a cost uh for example on this first uh, uh information that is the same thing number of books okay now i am interested in uh, uh how many uh, books having uh, uh, less than 50 uh, 50 uh, 20 dollar let's say this is what i am interested in so i am interested in calculating the cost uh, how many books out of uh, 470 textbooks in a survey uh, their cost is less than 20 so how can i get it because i can get the 15 to 20 it is 97 books but i am interested in uh, this range where the uh, or you can think cost is a random variable so if you book any book uh, this any uh, cost of the book is a random variable so cost can take any value uh, 10 15 14 20 30 it can take any value and we took an observation and we found this data and this uh, information additional information that how many books would be costing less than 20 dollars it means uh, 15 to 20 is 97 and 10 to 15 is 53 so what you need is you need to sum up all these string to get this information so 163 books would be costing less than 20 dollars it means what we are doing is we have a frequency here 13 and frequency in this range is 53 so uh, 53 plus 13 would be 66 so you are adding up the frequencies 
and then 66 would be added with 97 to get 163. So uh, this uh, frequency gives the uh, uh, number of books in that interval and this uh, cost is actually the represented uh, this information can be represented through a, uh, through an information what you call it a cumulative frequency which is uh, adding the uh, frequency from the previous uh, intervals so you add them together and eventually the last would be the total number of books that uh, has been surveyed should come so it would be so cumulative information for for example if i am interested in uh, we are interested in calculating the number of books having cost less than 35 dollars so this 429 would be the answer that 429 books would be having the uh, cost less than 35 dollars so if you draw this uh, 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 table you will, uh, cumulative frequency table you will be able to know this information as a cumulative not just for a given interval but for overall uh, value so uh, obviously for example if i say 429 are the books having cost less than 35 dollars so it means if i'm interested in knowing the cost greater than, greater than 35 would be 470 minus uh, uh, 429 so that would be the number that would be representing the cost greater than uh, uh, 35 and if you add them these three numbers you are going to get uh, this thing as well uh, and this table is uh, redrawn here uh, that is actually a cumulative frequency table and uh, interestingly if you plot this uh, cost on the horizontal axis and its corresponding cumulative frequency on the y-axis so for example let's say for uh, 10 less cost less than 10 dollars so 13 is the number here and for uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, next is uh, 66 66 is a number for 15 dollars so 15 dollar is this and 66 is this similarly you you have all the data points uh, represented by this cross and you draw these uh, join these uh, points to get a curve and what you are going to get you always going to get a s shaped curve so that curve is called as cumulative frequency curve uh, which is representing the uh, random variable which can take any value here and uh, interestingly there is no question of even the data is uh, whatever the data is but uh, this curve would be a continuous curve uh, and this interestingly what we can do is for example the middle value which is actually the median which is uh, so uh, your cost is uh, 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 out of 470 uh, the half number is uh, this so if you go from this point this half number would be uh, 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 greater than 200 and less than 250 and which is half of 470 actually uh, if you just draw this and you will be able to get the median value of the cost so median value here comes out to be 22.5 dollars and similarly if uh, out of 470 is the total 470 is the total here 450 470 is the total and if 25 percent of the data which is 25 uh, percent of 470 is this which is called as uh, first quartile and 75% uh, of this would be called as uh, upper quartile or uh, third quartile uh, so and the difference between q3 and q1 would be called as an interquartile so uh, cumulative frequency curves gives you the uh, quartiles as well or if it is a 10% of the data it is percentile no? so uh, uh, this additional information we get from this cumulative uh, uh, distribution curve so what is uh, a cumulative distribution function uh, this uh, curve is represented by some mathematical function and uh, uh, for a discrete random variable x this cumulative distribution function is represented by a capital letter f of x so keep in mind a small f of x is used for a probability mass function for discrete variable and probability density function for continuous random variable and capital f of x is used for a cumulative distribution function and this mathematically what cumulative is 
it is actually giving you the sum of the probabilities so these frequencies and if you divide by the total number it is going to give a probability that is represented by the probability mass function so but uh, cdf or cumulative distribution function is actually uh, once your random variable you are interested for example you are interested in cost less than 20 dollars so here x can be a cost which could be any random variable if it is less than or equal to some value it could be 20 it could be 30 or it could be 35 then this would this function would be representing the probability which is actually for a random variable when the value of the random variable would be less than some threshold value and which would be nothing just the sum of the probabilities for that threshold value so uh, uh, and that mathematical function we represent by a capital letter f of x it is called as cumulative uh, uh, distribution function so uh, cumulative distribution function is nothing just the summation of uh, the probability mass function up to some threshold value and uh, these are the conditions which must satisfy it for example if x is a discrete random variable then this cdf value would always be since it's a probability so its value would be lying between 0 and 1 and for any value uh, which is let's say 20 dollars uh, your uh, function probability would always be less and for 30 dollars if uh, x is greater than uh, uh, y is greater than x if y is 30 dollars then this prob this sum this uh, probability uh, this mathematical value of that function would always be greater than so you can see it because it is an s shape curve so if you go on the y which is greater than x then the corresponding value will always be greater than the value for x this x is a smaller value and y is a bigger value then its corresponding probability in this s shape curve would be satisfying this condition uh, and let's say for example you are tossing the fair coin twice uh, the probable possibility would be uh, uh, first, uh, um, uh, in the, the getting the head, zero head would be 0.25, one head would be 0.5, and two head would be 0.25. So this would be your uh, probability mass function. And what we have done is uh, uh, cumulative distribution function is nothing, just adding up the probability mass function. So zero is there, zero is there, zero plus and 0 0.25 plus 0 would be 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5 would be 0 0.75 and 0 0.75 0 0.25 would be 1 obviously the sum must reaches to the 1 once you reaches to the top of the curve so mathematically we can represent this scenario because x is a discrete random variable s can take value less than 0 is uh, the uh, the value comes out to be 0 and greater than 2 would be come out to be 1 so between 0 and 1 the value comes out to be 0.25 which is 1 upon 4 and uh, value between 1 and 2 is uh, this probability is uh, uh, lying three, uh, 0 0.75 and graphically the same function with uh, can be represented so between 0 less than 0 is uh, 0, fun 0 f of x and between 0 and 1.25 and between 1 and 2 is 3 by 4 and greater than 2 is 1. So the same uh, uh, step function can be used to uh, represent on a graph as well. So capital of x is nothing uh, a cumulative distribution function. Let's say for example for a discrete random variable x which can take value of 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and its corresponding uh, not corresponding probability but the cumulative uh, probability uh, is uh, f of x which is uh, it's uh, uh, this for this value it is going to be 1 uh, we need to find out the reverse we need to find out when your x can take 3 value when your if your value of x is 3 so we small x is 3 then what would be its corresponding value that is something you have to work out and then the probability when x is greater than 2 so you know from the definition uh, f of 3 is uh, f of x is probability when x is less than or equal to x so here x is comes out to be 3 here threshold value is 3 so anything which is either less than th equal to 3 or less than 3 so it could be 1 it could be 2 it could be 3 so if you add those probabilities for 
वन टू एंड थ्री सो इट मीन्स दिस वुड बी योर कम्यूलेटिव डिस्ट्री वैल्यू ऑफ द कम्यूलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन डायरेक्टली यू कैन गेट इट फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन और इफ यू नो इट्स करस्पॉन्डिंग प्रॉबिलिटीज एट दोज करस्पॉन्डिंग प्रॉबिलिटीज हेयर आई हैव नॉट शोन करस्पॉन्डिंग प्रॉबिलिटीज हेयर इट इज शोन कम्यूलेटिव सो इफ स्मॉल एफ ऑफ एक्स इज देयर यू एड दोज वैल्यूज यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द सेम थिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन गैल्यू वैल्यू ग्रेटर दैन टू सो यू गस्ट कैलकुलेट ऑन टू इट मीन्स एक्स शुड बी लेस दैन एंड इक्वल टू टू सो इक्वल टू टू मीन्स इक्वल टू वन एंड इक्वल टू टू सो दैट वुड बी पॉइंट थ्री वुड बी इट्स कम्यूलेटिव फंक्शन विच जस्ट पुटिंग एक्स इन दैट फंक्शन यू गेट दिस वैल्यू और इफ आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन नोइंग प्रॉबलिटी एट एक्स इक्वल टू थ्री दिस इज समथिंग आई कैन वर्क आउट इट मीन्स थ्री मीन्स कम्यूलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन एट थ्री माइनस द कम्यूलेटिव डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एट टू देन इट वुड बी द वैल्यू एट एग्जैक्टली एट एक्स इक्वल टू थ्री so this probability minus this probability would be the probability at x equal to 3 so this is the answer for part a and for probability greater than 2 means 1 minus less than equal to 2 and less than equal to 2 means one of this cumulative and then it would be equal to 0.68 so at this point you should be very careful about uh, uh, pmf and cdf pmf is giving you the probability of a random variable at a given value and uh, capital f of x is giving you the sum of the probabilities which is actually the uh, for a given value uh, threshold value whatever the value threshold value is a random variable is less than that threshold uh, it is giving you that value which is actually the cumulative of that value so uh, uh, it is important to understand the difference between the uh, small f of x and capital f of x Okay I stopped this lecture today